This is Home to All, an all-inclusive real estate podcast with your host, Nicholas Acosta. Nick sits down with guests to talk about real estate and how it works. Reach him at downtown.expert on Facebook and Instagram or his website, www.downtown.expert or call or text him at 407-508-8809. Enjoy the episode. Good morning, everybody. This is Home to All, an all-inclusive real estate podcast. I'm Nicholas Acosta, your host, licensed Florida real estate broker with Downtown Expert Realty LLC here in Orlando, Florida. I'm here today with our sponsor, Blanchard Insurance, Mike Tinsetic, president and CEO of Blanchard Insurance. Uh, Blanchard Insurance, like I said, is a paid advertiser of the podcast. Mike, welcome to the show. How's it going on this? Hey, week? great, Nick. Great, Nick. Uh, just got uh, preparing for the uh, holidays here. Got the uh, cornucopia in the uh, background going on. So uh, looking forward. You looking forward to the uh, holiday this year? Oh, yeah. Well, the Thanksgiving is always usually when my family celebrates my birthday, but my actual birthday is Friday, which I'll be turning 40. Happy, uh, happy early birthday. And that oh, is thank a, you. <laughs> you got to go out and celebrate that one. That is a, a memorable one to celebrate. Know, Same, and, obviously. Yeah, definitely. And it's a different world that we live in today compared to a year ago, but it's still, everything's getting better. That's all is good. All good. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so Mike, just wanted to find out what's going on. How about you? How, what are you doing for the, the holiday? Thanksgiving? <laughs> Uh, well, it's, uh, was going to <laughs> go down and, uh, my mother actually lives down in, uh, Port St. Lucie, but, uh, you know, and, uh, down there in, uh, traditions, which if you no know, people out there don't know, I mean, that's a huge, uh, retirement community, uh, for a lot of people from, uh, up North, uh, you know, move down there, but it, they are quarantined right now. And I, th it's kind of like, you can't really get out and see them. Uh, you know, the average age down there is 65 plus. So I don't want to go down there and, you know, obviously expose my mom to, you know, potentially, you know, people I've been around and whatnot. And it kind of seems to be the <laughs> consensus down there is. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'll probably do something virtually, but uh, uh, yeah, I would just, you know, tr trying to be safe this year and, and, uh, you know, get together in person with family next year, uh, hopefully is, is, is a lot better. And it's just not Thanksgiving. I mean, uh, usually some, somebody in our family goes to up to where my dad is buried in uh, Arlington Cemetery there in D.C. every year. And this is like with the first year, actually, nobody could actually go in there and lay a wreath for a Veterans Day. So like, like you said, I mean, it's, it's just a different world. And, uh, you know, we just have to kind of, you know, grin and bear it, you know, until, uh, you know, they come out with a vaccine or something else changes. Oh, yeah, I couldn't uh, agree more. And uh, I know things like that are happening. They, I think it was an article in the, I want to say WFLA channel eight and Tampa, I guess Tampa general, I don't, I, maybe by the end of this year, beginning of the year, they're supposed to have the first wave of vaccines for the coronavirus is what I read. So that's promising news out there for people. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, no, things, things are going good. I mean, we've been uh, really, we haven't slowed down. We haven't skipped a beat. We've been really busy. I think I was telling you in uh, pre-show, I mean, we've been doing several hundred uh, home proposals this month. So the real estate market is still booming. Uh, obviously, uh, closings have slowed down a little bit because of the holiday. Things have been pushed back and moved around a little bit, but we've been going strong. We actually, as you know, we were uh, working on, with you on a couple clients uh, over the weekend. So and we plan on being open. Uh, some of us here, some of us are going out of town and, and whatnot uh, for family and whatnot. But uh, I, I myself am going to be here Friday and uh, some of our agents on our team are going to be working because we got to get things done. So uh, that's how we're going to be spending our Black Friday. Oh, no, I know. I completely agree. Um, so what's this past uh, week or last week? What's been going on over there at Blanchard Insurance? What have you guys run into? What new challenges are you guys facing? One of the challenges that I wanted to bring up today that we have been seeing and we have been facing, and I'm sure the real estate community and the lending community, even down to title, um, has been experiencing lately, especially here in Solo. Uh, 
uh, which is, you know, Seminole Orange Lake in Osceola County uh, that, you know, a lot of us, especially on this podcast, and I know you do most of your real estate uh, business here is replacement cost on homeowners insurance. And just to going back on a very brief history of it, when I got into the business, which was back in 2003, when we insured a home and you're talking about replacement cost, insurance companies were very liberal back then. Uh, policy language was very liberal. I mean, they actually, in other states, they still have this, but it was called like an open perils policy. Uh, now it's kind of called, you know, a named peril or a special perils policy. But basically what that meant is, is you know, insurance lingo was, if we can't find a reason to deny a claim, we'll pay you out for anything. Uh, but when we used to insure a house back in the day, the and what this blog was really about was and it might be on my feed I, or Ali hasn't posted it yet as you're scrolling through there but what we used to do is we used to go off what the appraisal said and it used to be either purchase price or you know down there on what, what is it page four or five where it says total cost estimated new and you know the appraiser was obviously trying to jive the numbers and make everything work and they're not really uh, qualify. They're not a general contractor, so they're not really qualified to determine what it costs to rebuild a house. So back then, like let's say the house was you know for sale for two hundred thousand dollars, and the total cost estimated new was two hundred thousand dollars on a twenty five hundred square foot house. And let's say they had the total cost estimated new number at sixty to eighty dollars per square foot. That's what everybody was insuring for. Now, what had happened was when two thousand and eight came around and the housing market crashed, you got to remember a lot of these lenders were stuck still with these homeowners insurance policies. And even though the person that had moved out of the house and moved on and they were going through all these vandalism claims, water claims, theft claims, basically because all these properties were vacant, what the more lending industry ran into was we have all these properties still insured and these claims aren't paying out because we're running into, they're not properly insured. So the insurance companies are either denying the claims or changing the replacement cost to actual cash value. So, you know, in layman's terms, you know, what you should have gotten paid, uh, it was probably cut in half, if not more. And the mortgage company kind of learned the lesson. So, and what happened after that is a lot of the insurance companies started incorporating third party software from the building industry and what claims adjusters were using. Not like really exact to made, but there are all these spinoffs like um, the 360 value and home value and even proprietary software that the homeowners insurance companies, uh, you know, develop. So what they do there is they plug in all these uh, public data and they've gotten really good at it where they can just like on an open API, just like incorporate it, incorporate it on it. A lot of it's just automatic these days, but I'm pulling information from the MLS and they put it through a calculation and they cut and it's updated daily based on what the construction industry is seeing in certain markets and it's on a national scale. So what you saw was you saw those numbers instead of 60 to 80 dollars per square foot start slowly creeping up around 100 to 125 dollars per square foot well that was good between 2008 until recently and the mortgage companies started recently requesting copies of these replacement cost estimators for their underwriting because they never want to be put in a position like 2008 all over again. I, I don't think we're ever going to have a crash of that magnitude ever again, but they're preparing themselves just in case that happens. Now, nowadays, like in Orange County, uh, minimum replacement costs on a home that is, if it's not new construction, and I'm saying going back even to 2010 and older is probably around $150 per square foot. And people go, wow, you know, well, I can buy a house for less than that, or I can rebuild a house for that. You know, I can go down to DR Horton. Yes, you can, but that's not incorporating renovation costs. That's not incorporating uh, remediation costs and the labor, demolition, and everything else that goes into that. And I know we've had Antonio on our uh, show before, mm -hmm. and recently we kind of audited ourselves. Like we looked at all these different 
softwares and put in different properties and she tried to calculate what the replacement cost is and, and had Antonio, because he's a general contractor, look at these costs and look at these proposals. And he's like, yeah, I mean, spot on. I mean, anything below $150 per square foot insuring a property now is insane. And as you know, uh, you know, coming from the adjusting side, when they get into co-insurance clauses, which a lot of people don't know about, but it's built into pretty much every homeowner's insurance policy, which says, if you don't insure your policy for 80% of whatever figure the insurance company or the adjuster comes up with, then you get into a co-insurance penalty without going into a huge calculation here that will, will even boggles my mind. What it means is it's probably going to cut your claim in half or give you pawn shop uh, prices. And what I mean by that, and then it's even on your personal property. So, so for example, let's say we have a house should be insured for $200,000. It's insured for $150,000. Obviously that's 75% of the $200,000. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, if that house burns down to the ground after the calculations are done, you're probably only getting about fifty to hundred thousand dollars. So it's a very jeopardous situation that people put themselves into. Now, you know, and we've we've done uh, homeowners insurance proposals for your clients, Nick, and I know. Yep. Every single time it's practice here, we send over a copy of that report that we spend probably about a half hour every single time compiling to make sure the insured, uh, the client, the buyer or the homeowner is actually insuring their proper uh, their home properly. Right. And, and now the more, like I said, the mortgage companies are auditing this when you go to closing. So. And like I saw you in pre-show, we tried to do a test one day where we tried to get a replacement cost figure past a, a mortgage underwriter. And they actually caught on to what we did because we were just kind of like auditing ourselves. And I was like, wow, I have never seen the, the lending uh, industry do as much underwriting as they are doing now. So it's almost like you can't really even beat the system anymore, which is amazing because as you know, we've talked about everybody's always trying to get one over on the system and get something through underwriting, uh, but it's almost becoming like impossible. So it's it's something, like I said, there's a blog that's going to be coming out on our Facebook page that everybody everybody should read it. it uh, you know, it takes, it'll take you like five minutes, but it's, it's eye-opening and very interesting. No, I completely agree. Yeah. It, the, days the days of, of uh, um, being able yeah. to, uh, I don't know, to get what you think you're going to get in value. It's it's a new world that we live in because of the coronavirus and the way that business has changed. A lot of businesses have closed. Um, just to speak of which, uh, getting uh, that's another thing that stores now are giving out uh, post Thanksgiving sales in advance. And I asked the people at the stores this weekend, will you guys have these kind of sales on Friday? And they said, no. What you've seen right now is the best deal and prices will pretty much go back to normal on Friday because they're just trying to make up for all the time closed during coronavirus. And also just to get to the point of is that um, you, yeah, you need to know out there what is required to, to cover your property. Like I was showing my seller or buyer, like we, you guys helped me out with a quote this weekend and I'm very grateful for you guys getting back so quickly on that. Anybody listening out there that they do an amazing job getting these quotes to me for my buyer. Uh, and they, you know, flat out told the, the honest truth that on the property we're looking at, the roof needs to be replaced because of the age. And, uh, but it wasn't, you know, some people may have tried to pass that one over, but like you're saying about you're auditing yourselves now, which is an awesome thing that you guys are doing uh, just so you can be prepared when it really hasn't, you really have an audit that you know, your customers are can trust and count on you to get you the best car, you know, the right coverage for their policy. Yeah, it, it comes down to, I mean, when I have, you know, a conversation with with, with a home buyer and uh, obviously, obviously we run into this all the time where, you know, they have competitor quotes come out and, you know, maybe, you know, some guy at a call center in Nevada sends them a quote or the builder sends them a quote. And, uh, and that brings me onto a topic. I'm going to actually use that example. Uh, the builders, uh, whether, and I'm not going to name them, obviously we know who they are, but right. they have their, and I mean, they give you, of course, closing cost incentives to go with their, their lending, their insurance company, their title company and whatnot on the insurance side, which we're really privy to, uh, when we see some of these quotes come over, I'm like, uh, you know, it's a 
builder's risk. It's not a standard homeowner's policy. Right. It's on California paper because that's where they're quoting out of an agency in California, not on Florida paper. Uh, they don't have replacement costs on this policy and whatnot. And you got to understand, I mean, for them, it's merely a transaction. I mean, they're trying to get as much money out of the transaction. That's why they're doing the lending. That's why they're doing the title and trying to maximize, you know, their profit on selling, you know, you, know, you a you know, modern tract home. Uh, but what it puts you in a uh, precarious situation as the homeowner is like you're buying basically the value of, you know, this piece of paper and that's all it is. So it's a couple cents because I can guarantee you that insurance policy, if it pays out anything, it's not going to be a lot and it's going to leave you in a haphazard situation. And guess what? When that house burns down to the ground, when you have a $50,000 water claim, yes, there's a home warranty, but most of that stuff is goes to your insurance policy. Right. And guess what? It's not going to be those, the builder is not going to be the one one coming out to fix a plumbing leak or fix, you know, clean up the water damage or even clean up the ashes because your house burned down to the ground. It's not going to be the builder. I can guarantee you that it's going to be a third party company. And as you know, as, as we've been seeing a lot of the contractors now, because real estate is so good, even getting an electrician to come out now, a plumber to come out, even a roofing company to come out, they're booked out like sometimes like four weeks, even like even longer than that. And it's caught and since they're it's in such high demand right now, they're inflating the costs. I mean, right. like, I mean, I have never seen costs this high. And like we, I was saying, you know, we were talking to Antonio. I was like, is, are these costs real? And he's like, absolutely. It's in high demand. Real estate's good. And those costs, you know, are inflated. So again, going back to you want to make sure you're buying something that has you know value and to give you another example uh we came up against a competitor the other day and they came in you know two hundred dollars less than our proposal and i'm looking at it going well there is no replacement cost on this person's personal belongings and it it goes to the adage that everybody knows what they should insure and what they have in their house and I'm t telling the client, I'm like, look, if your house burns, and, and let's not even say it burns down to the ground, if you get burglarized, and I can tell you we see burglaries and vandalism claims and everything else like on a daily basis, and I can tell you that somebody can rob, you know, even your condo, Nick, it's, they can come up with creative ways and they can rob you in, it's amazing, in 60 seconds, five minutes, right. they will be in and out with everything in your house. And I was telling this lady, I was like, guess what? If you don't have that replacement cost endorsement on your policy, the insurance company, it turns it to actual cash value. Well, actual cash value, the, the comparison I like to make is pawn shop prices. And she goes, well, well, you know, what, what should I do? And I was like, well, you got two options. You know, you can insure properly and make sure you're getting the value out of what you should be insuring for. Or I was like, get the number for uh, every pawn shop within five miles, because I guarantee you, once you get have a claim and get burglarized, it's going to, you know, you're going to have to go to those pawn shops to collect your items. And like I said, I mean, they're stealing, you know, like I think we talked about this before, you know, it's like it's right. medications, it's jewelry and it's all these things. Uh, and to touch on another subject um, that, you know, I don't mean to ramble on, but it's, it's, no, it's fine. this is the time of year where we see a lot of jewelry claims, unfortunately. I uh, just had one the other day. I mean, it was probably close to $30,000. And thank God the insured decided to um, buy jewelry insurance, a separate policy for uh, mysterious disappearance. And what had happened was uh, their spouse had just misplaced it and lost it forever. And I mean, the cost of the policy per year was probably, I think it was like $500 or $300 or something like that. Never thought they would have to use, never thought it would happen. But guess what? At the end of the day, they're getting $30,000 uh, in their pocket to replace that asset actual lost, you know, family heirloom. At least right, it's right. something. I know it's, you know, sentimental and whatnot, but statistically, I would say about 1% of people out there even actually insure their engagement rings, which is scary. That is scary. I didn't know it was that low of a number. That is shocking, yeah. though. Shockingly <laughs> low. Yeah, it's shockingly low. <laughs> Especially the amount of money that people have to come up with to get them, and if they put it on credit and stuff, there's that huge risk that they lose it and they're still paying the debt on something they no longer possess if it's stolen and the only 1% of people are insuring it. So, 
And yep. and the reason we have a lot of burglary claims uh, this time of year is it's a very sad thing. I don't mean to crush anybody's holiday spirit here, but people have holiday parties, Thanksgiving parties, holiday parties, Christmas parties, whatever. Uh, but what happens is a lot of the claims we actually see are when you have a party, things get stolen, things go missing, and somebody goes into the bedroom of your home, even if it's, uh, you know, have a birthday party or whatnot, and you know, a kid goes in there, a teenager, and steals your jewelry or steals your gun like we were talking about last week, you know, lock up your guns. Uh, things like that happen this time of year. It's unfortunately, but we see a spike in burglaries and everything every year. We saw one, uh, the most interesting one I've ever seen around the holidays was, uh, I was living over in Winter Springs at the time in uh, Jessup's, uh, Jessup's Reserve. And there were three-story townhomes. I built a townhome back in 2013. I kept an alarm system on the first floor, you know, like anybody else. And it wasn't really right. a gated community, but it was secure. We had cops living in the neighborhood, probably like three cops, even an FHP, like living in the neighborhood. What had happened was, and this is ingenious, and criminals are ingenious, is they came in and they knew nobody had the third floor of their homes monitored for alarm. No cameras, nothing. What they did was they came in, uh, and it looked like a landscaping company, put up ladders to the third floor and started putting Christmas lights on people's balconies. And I even saw it. And I was kind of like driving by and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, someone's putting some you know, strings on the balconies on the third floor and whatnot. What they were doing was <laughs> they were going in the third floor huh. and robbing it because that's where the master bedroom was on all these units ransacked about five homes, just completely jewelry, everything out of the third floor. And nobody knew. And what was the cost for them? A ladder and five strings of Christmas lights. Yep. And that was the most, one of the craziest things I've seen, in, or, you know, around the holidays. And again, and again, going back to what I said, probably about 1% of these people had all of those items insured. So it was just kind of a sad day. But like, like I said, we, unfortunately, this time of year, we see spikes and things like that. Oh, no, I, I believe it. And speaking of which, and like everyone, anybody out there living, listening and, or watching today that lives in a high rise, like Lee and I do in 35 stories, uh, Mike, you brought up a good point that you're talking about in the condo, how it can take 60 seconds to rob. Now, there's a lot of internal things. Uh, we have a lot of vendors that come here. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lock company that comes here to change locks. Uh, we have, for instance, maintenance people in the building that work for the HOA. Um, we have security uh, company that works here, third party. Um, but you never knew who was in your unit. And they also have cleaning services, construction people, oh, you know, yeah. people that are just sometimes random. Yes, they have to go get the return in their ID, have a badge. Uh, but there are a lot of blind spots in the building that they can get, um, what do you call it? Can sneak away with stuff in yeah. like 60 second time. They could try to blend in with the rest of the population in the building and get away with stealing something. And we've had window washers that scale the building from the 35th floor. I don't know how they do that without a bucket thing. They do it just on the rope thing with the, yeah. you know, the, the hooks or whatever they do at the top. But those are opportunities too. So there's all, so just because you're in a 35 story tower, like that we are, doesn't mean you're uh, completely safe from. Statistically, absolutely. Statistically, we see more burglaries and robberies and, and everything else in uh, gated communities. Right. And the psychology behind that is I'm in a gated community. Nobody's going to rob me. There's a 24 right. man, you know, I'm up in Alaqua Lakes and whatnot. They have more like actually burglaries up there. Cause what happens is the landscaping trailer backs up to the house. Oh, they open the garage and everything in the garage and everything inside the house just goes right into the trailer. And guess what? They're not looking at that trailer, pulling at the landscaping trailer, pulling out of the neighborhood. And it's not, I'm not picking on landscapers. I mean, it's not, um, it, could be a, it could be a plumbing truck. It could be a delivery truck. And, but again, nobody thinks, no, nobody thinks of it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, like, like you were saying, it, they just completely blend in with the surroundings. And like I said before, I mean, I didn't think it was true until I got into this industry. And I mean, I'd seen stuff on, you know, TV and, you know, t shows and how fast they can rob a house. But 
I, I, I've seen it like happen where one of our clients, you know, one left for work, the other was coming home from work, five minute difference, completely liquidated the house. And it's just, it's incredible. Well, and then until like last week when I went to do his showing and all this talk about, well, speaking of which, I have, I've reached out already to somebody in your office. They're working on it right now. Getting a quote for general liability, also cyber liability for the business, for the brokerage. Because, you know, you hear all these things on the news and you hear these things on Facebook, on these real estate groups or whatever you want to talk to where real estate agents and brokers communicate with each other, share ideas and experiences. You hear about firearms being present in properties. Uh, but not until the other day or last week, I encountered one for the first time yeah. in front of me with my buyer and had been faced with a challenging situation, especially when uh, the other side knew that um, that it was there and did not want it or they did not properly store it. I, I didn't think that putting a firearm on top of a shelf in a closet in a vacant home is the proper place to secure the firearm. Uh, because you never know who walks in there. It could have been a child in there that could have climbed up that thing and got grabbed it, didn't know if it was loaded or not. And, uh, you know, it, it's just crazy that you never know what you run into. And especially, I think, yeah, you're, and then to your point though, real quick, and before we get back onto it, um, I think that's a good point. Like, just like a gated community, uh, people that live in the high rise, like where we live here in downtown, think, oh, well, there's security desks, there's cameras in the hallway, there's cameras in the elevators. Oh, uh, we don't need extra protection or extra insurance. We're good. Nothing's ever going to happen. Or if you don't get insurance at all and you're supposed to have insurance, Oh, there'll never be a fire. I mean, in the middle of the night, yeah, it's uh, Saturday night, I think it was. Uh, that was the first night that I didn't have to wake up early on a Sunday. And then at 3 a.m., the fire alarm was off. <laughs> the, the generator was having issues yeah. the building, and it was like light smoke that set it off. But And then, of course, the fire alarm in these buildings, you can't turn them off until the fire department shows up with their special key to verify that there's no fire. So, and, and guess what? That's probably uh, th the best time to, uh, unfortunately, rob your neighbors is because I used to live down in the uh, Ivy across from uh, Florida Hospital for uh, for a year uh, before I, I moved recently back to the burbs. And yeah, I remember those days. I don't miss them. It was like every time somebody burned something in their, you know, Tostino pizza rolls in their oven, right. the fire department came. So everybody's you know standing out on the street with their babies and their dogs screaming at 2 a.m. And that's, you know, happened at least once a week. But thinking about it, I'm like, I, I mean, my I guess my door automatically locked, but somebody could have easily like come behind me, stuck their toe in, and just robbed me. Because everybody was just like, ah, you know, panicking. I got to get out of the building. You know, it's it's annoying. I don't want to go deaf from this. But yeah, it's that's interesting. No, I, no, it's it's true. Well, no, you never know who who walks into your unit when they have. Especially, we were talking in pre-show, Mike, and everyone listening that uh, either today, between today and tomorrow, and beginning of next week the board of uh, or whatever the insurance agents or whatever is supposed to come in here to our units to check the relief valves yeah. on the, uh, or an inspector for the building is supposed to check on the relief valves for the hot water heaters. You never know. I'm not saying that anybody is uh, a bad person out there, but you never know when there's an opportunity. Like they told me about the firearm just be, uh, in the property, even though my buyer is a very sweet lady. Uh, one of my colleagues or business partners within my brokerage said, just because she's a very sweet lady and just because you're a very nice man doesn't mean that one of you would look for an opportunity uh, to pull that firearm out of that closet that's sitting there. Absolutely. So. And, and and it's like you said initially, I mean, it's COVID. Uh, it's the holidays. Uh, people are getting furloughed. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see the stats after this holidays of, you know, burglaries, I think, are going to go through the roof because I think oh, it's Lord. just like people are furloughed. People are desperate. Uh, COVID and, and everything else going on. And I know we talked about this in pre-show, but I wanted to touch on this as well for all the, you know, the realtors and lenders and title and small business owners out there that they just did a study the other day that uh, I was reading some white paper on about our industry and claims and whatnot. And they are seeing a spike in relation to COVID for uh, what they call employee practices liability claims. And for those of you out there who you know think that's Greek, basically what that means is sexual harassment, discrimination, uh, anything, you know, wrongful termination, wrongful hiring practices. And the correlation which made a lot of sense was 
uh, for example, and you know, let, let's say I work for you, Nick, and let's say uh, right. I do something. You're going to furlough me anyways because you know of COVID and there's not enough work and you know, blah blah blah. And like you lay me off. Well, if there's something that I can come up with, yeah, I mean, I'm going to get unemployment. You may even give me a severance package or whatnot. But it's an opportune time where I can come up with something to come right. against my employer that says, and I know we were talking about that, where I actually saw a business business owner and the employee terminated just had recently got a neck tattoo. So now he's coming back against the employer and saying, well, no, it's, you didn't really furlough me because of COVID. You could afford to pay me. What you did was because I got this cross tattooed on my neck, it's discrimination now and it's religious discrimination filed a lawsuit against the uh, the business owner. So you're going to see a lot of that. Now, can you buy insurance to protect yourself? Yes, they actually sell insurance. And I recommend all them small business owners, especially to get it because a lot of them don't have HR departments. A lot of them, like when I've seen HR audits, they're not really compliant because they're not huge corporations. They're not going to hire somebody or do something that is, you know, the, the scope of a fire, Fortune 500 company. So if you can't do it, at least insure yourself against that. Because again, it's another part of that COVID claim where, you know, what I was talking about uh, before, which is the third wave of where, you know, employees not only are going to say, well, I got COVID at work because they didn't take the proper precautions and I'm going to sue my employer, but now it's also going to, add, in addition to that, it's going to be like, well, if I got furloughed, then it's wrongful termination and I'm going to come up with a reason that it's wrong discrimination or, or some something else to go against my employer. So they are seeing a spike uh, in those claims as well. So it's, a, again, another thing for a lot of uh, small businesses to wor worry about and think about. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Um, so, Mike, so we're out of time, but before we go, any tips for the week uh, for Thanksgiving coming up? I know a lot of times this time of year people uh, get close with their deep fryers when they're making turkeys or <laughs> yeah. or they stick their hand in the oven and burn themselves because they're not careful. Any tips as an insurance carrier, insurance company out there uh, in terms of what to do to prevent something from happening or try to prevent something from happening? Yeah, I... <sighs> I always say just you, if you use common sense and most of the claims that we see are just, they're preventable, unfortunately. And a couple of years, oh, and this is probably going back actually more than a couple of years dating myself here, but we actually unfortunately saw uh, one of our clients try to use a deep fryer in their garage on a townhome uh, uh, one year and gave themselves like carbon monoxide poisoning. And I mean, it was just like, really? Like people still do that? So uh, my sage advice for anybody is just use common sense and everything will be okay. And that's the best advice I can give. Same here. And uh, anyone listening that's in any business or real estate, if you go out there, uh, just keep an eye out for safety things. Like uh, if you see something like a firearm, uh, take the proper uh, steps to safely protect yourself as well as your buyer or anybody with you. And drive uh, safe. Drive safe. Drive safe. Definitely. Oh, trust me. Yes. I was on the road this morning before the podcast. It's crazy out there. Everybody. Uh, everybody hey, fatalities yep. are up from 8% to 17% ever since they opened the roads from COVID. And I, I'm seeing people swerving around me, running red lights, going there. I saw somebody last night try to get on I-4 going the wrong way. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Like just, huh. dude, everybody forgot how to drive. And it's just so everybody just be careful out there, please. Completely agree. So before we sign off, let me just say, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Let me take, uh, hold on. Yeah, there you go, guys. Happy Thanksgiving there. I updated that graphic for the end here. Uh, but uh, so, uh, all right, Mike. Well, I'm happy really Thanksgiving, man. Have a, have a good Thanksgiving. I say happy Thanksgiving to Jamie and Allie and everybody over there. Happy 40th. Family. Happy 40th come this Friday. Oh, uh, thank you. See, I keep forgetting it on purpose. I know. Uh, right? All right, guys. Well, this has been Home to All, an all inclusive real estate podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Acosta, a licensed real estate broker here in Central Florida. Uh, with Downtown Expert Realty, LLC. Have a safe, happy Thanksgiving. Be careful on the road. Be careful out there in the world. And uh, Mike, again, I'll see you next Tuesday. Absolutely. And we'll talk about our, our makeup uh, episode next week sometime, but I'll see you Tuesday for sure. And have a great Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before that. You too.
All right, guys. Well, you guys have a great day and take care. This has been Home to All, an all-inclusive real estate podcast. Find Nick on Facebook and Instagram at downtown.expert and also his website, www.downtown.expert or call or text him at 407-508-8809. Thanks for listening. Instead of spending hours or even days looking for your new home, let a downtown Central Florida expert guide you. Hi, I'm Nicholas Acosta, and I'm here to welcome you home. Being a Florida native, I know how exciting, convenient, and stylish the downtown Florida lifestyle is. Whether you're entertaining your guests or enjoying the views, Central Florida downtown has a lot to offer you and your family. Buying, selling, or investing, I'm your downtown Central Florida expert.